Have you ever noticed how the world ignores a new technology for years? Then suddenly, every major institution acts like they can't survive without it? What if decentralized compute becomes the next one? And what if artificial intelligence is a force that accelerates the shift even faster than anyone expects? Because today, we're breaking down a major trend that barely shows up in mainstream coverage, yet becomes obvious the moment you look into the data itself. Institutions and governments are quietly facing increasing pressure to rely not just on cloud platforms, but on secure, tamper-resistant, decentralized compute. Not because it's cool, not because it's crypto, but because centralized systems are running into real-world limits. And artificial intelligence is pushing those limits harder every single day. We'll look at the numbers, the patterns, the risks and the gaps. We'll break down why networks like the Internet Computer Protocol or ICP, or better, the world computer, are gaining attention in rooms you never hear about. And I'll share a few stories from my time in traditional finance that reveal why this shift actually makes a lot of sense than people realize. Then we'll close by explaining why events like today, what's happening in Abu Dhabi Finance Week, are giving decentralized compute a seat at the table. And why AI-driven crimes might compress the adoption timeline faster than anyone is expecting. So let's get into it and let's send it. Back when I worked in traditional finance, one question came up more often than anything else during internal reviews. How do we prove what happened? Not what happened, but how do we prove it? I remember a case where there was a settlement discrepancy. It showed up in a daily report where I had to review our daily reports. And the numbers weren't huge, but the origin was unclear. The system's logs were scattered, I recall, across multiple internal layers, internal servers, owned by different teams, each with different permission layers, for three days. The conversation kept coming back to which team touched the last file? Why does a log look different? Who updated the batch process? Nobody had tamper-proof trails. Nobody knew which version was final. Nobody could prove much of anything. It was just all in, it was all in doubt. And that's the exact institutional pain the centralized compute solves. You know, it solves those verifiable log problems, tamper-resistant updates, and systems where everything is traceable. Most people underestimate how big this actually is and why institutions really change systems. Institutions, they don't adopt new technology out of excitement or out of need. They switch when the old system becomes harder to justify. Cloud adoption followed this pattern. In-house servers became expensive. Hardware aged fast. Then we're talking internal breaches increased. Compliance became harder. Suddenly, cloud wasn't optional. It was survival. You know, the centralized compute is hitting the same early pattern. But the drivers are different because we look at the drivers such as trust, transparency, resilience, audibility. We look at it cross border accountability. These are areas where centralized systems naturally hit their limitations. And ICP's relevance in all this is full systems that are 100% decentralized on chain. Most blockchains can run small logic, smart contracts, wireless systems, small apps. But ICP or the world computer can run for web services, full backends, data heavy applications, AI inference, identity integrations, front end, back end in one verifiable environment. For institutions, this isn't about hype, it's about reducing risk. You know, it, it, this even comes back to my work in traditional finance in portfolio management. What was our job? It was always about reducing risk. And one thing you learn working in finance like I have also is that internal tampering can be more dangerous than external attacks. I once watched a senior team member scramble for hours. I remember he was stressing, ripping his hair out after a compliance script was accidentally modified. 
during a routine maintenance window. There was no malicious intent, but one unnoticed change that triggered a domino effect across multiple risk dashboards. And the root of the chaos wasn't the error itself. It was a lack of visibility. Because there was no clear trail. There was no provable sequence of events. No impartial order layer. If that same workflow, just say, it lived on a decentralized system like ICP, every update would have been logged, timestamped, verified, and clearly visible. So and that's where it's easy to be tracked and managed. And this is why analysts say decentralized compute makes intuitive sense for institutions. They've lived through this. You know, I've been through this firsthand working in traditional finance. And also, unfortunately, artificial intelligence is making cyber crime worse fast. You know, here's the part nobody wants to admit. AI is scaling. We're going to go through the AI productivity boom next year in 2026. And that is scaling cyber crime at institutional speed. Not next year, not in five years, but right now. You know, artificial intelligence can already write advanced malware, mimic corporate emails, generate flawless synthetic identities, you know, automate phishing attacks at scale. It can analyze weaknesses faster than most cyber security teams that they can do in person. Exploit mal misconfigurations instantly. So you don't need a genius hacker. You need someone with ChatGPT level tools and motivation to do it. And this is exactly where decentralized compute suddenly becomes relevant. And why AI-driven attacks speed up government adoption. Because in the traditional timeline sense, decentralized compute adoption might have ramped up in the early 2030s. But here is key. Artificial intelligence-driven cyber threats compress that timeline. And here's why. Centralized systems create what we call single points of failure. An artificial intelligence tool can scan, say, a cloud provider's misconfigurations at scale. One mistake affects millions. Decentralized systems, what do they do? They distribute that attack surface. And artificial intelligence makes insider threats far more dangerous. With AI tools, think about this. An insider can modify log scripts or databases invisibly. What decentralized systems create are immutable logs, verifiable commute, tamper evident updates. These directly reduce risks from the inside at the structural level. The AI-generated deepfake identities overwhelm centralized KYC systems. Governments already struggle with identity fraud. Artificial intelligence makes this exponentially harder to keep safe. ICP strong integration with web authentication and decentralized identity standards directly addressed this issue at the core because automated AI cyber attacks move too fast for traditional systems to keep up and to be able to keep it safe in regards to the current infrastructure because centralized response models require manual escalation and it's too slow. Decentralized models distribute accountability and resilience automatically. You know, it can keep up with these AI cyber attacks. And revised institutional adoption scenario, just think of it like this. If AI-driven cyber crime continues accelerating at today's pace, just say, at today's pace, there's many analysts out there that believe decentralized compute could see institutional experimentation much sooner, possibly within, say, starting from between 26 next year to, to 2028. And early pilot programs for tamper-resistant compute in, say, national identity systems, high-value supply chains, public service registries. We can also look at, say, AI audit logs, say, between 2028 and 2031, selective real-world integrations for systems requiring verifiable transparency. This isn't a prediction. It's a scenario based on pressure dynamics of artificial intelligence and the escalation of cybercrime through that. So, because when risk accelerates, adoption accelerates, and that's a fundamental key. Because AI cybercrime reminds me of a day in finance where systems glitched, forced an entire division to operate manually for hours. You know, it's even happening, you know, like I think it was the airport in Edinburgh had a cybercrime, they had to go 
to full manual approach. Like systems just trap themselves. And that's exactly the conversation governments are having right now. When AI amplifies digital fragility, the need for verifiable, decentralized infrastructure becomes clearly obvious. And that's what brings us today to the lovely Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates, where we have Abu Dhabi Finance Week this week. And today, there's a Digital Infrastructure 2030, which track focuses on artificial intelligence, Web3, and public systems. They don't invite hype. They invite solutions. And Dominic Williams, a key founder of the Finity Foundation, shows up there because ICP. And why do they invite him to the round table? Because the world computer tackles real world institutional problems. We're talking verifiable compute, transparent upgrades, tamper evident logs, identity integration, digital sovereignty, cross-border governance. These are the exact topics the global regulators and the players at that round table are preparing and talking about. The big takeaway is this, as AI accelerates, cyber risks, institutions need verifiable systems that can't be quietly altered, manipulated, or attacked through that single point of failure like it can now. And that's where decentralized compute becomes relevant, not as speculation, but as a response to the new world artificial intelligence is creating under our feet. Everything becomes crystal clear when you understand the force driving the next shift. Trust, transparency, and long-term digital resilience. Everything, and I mean everything we explore today, it shapes how digital infrastructure evolves. The decision made now determines the systems we depend on tomorrow. And as AI shapes, say, the digital landscape. Staying informed keeps you one step ahead in all of this. So if this video gave you value, tap that like button, share your thoughts below and subscribe so you never miss what's coming next. Remember to keep questioning, keep exploring, and more importantly, stay decentralized and I'll see you on the internet computer. Peace out.